So for today, right, we're happy to have Mr. Louis and his relatives, his brothers here with us today. So he'll be sharing with us some of the stories behind the amazing images that you see in the exhibitions, as well as some of the images that were not exhibited. Okay, so we'll get to know a bit more about him, how he pursued his photography passion, the challenges and the fun times that he had through the years. So for those of you who are not familiar with him, Mr. Lee just turned 81 last Sunday. So happy belated birthday. <laughs> so he currently you know, is working at SPH as a cleaner and he actually rides a motorbike to and fro from work every day. <laughs> so you can see he's still very fit. Yeah. So Mr. Lee started his interest in photography in the 1950s when he was in his early 20s. So he got his first camera from his eldest brother, Mr. Lee Hock Chai over there. Yeah, so he was the one who actually introduced him to photography and taught him the basics of photography. Yeah, so according to Mr. Lee here, you know, his brother was also very interested in photography, but he got very busy with work, so he passed the camera to him. So he got a chance to go around to shoot, and he was the one who pursued the photography as a hobby. So back then, Mr. Lee was working as an apprentice for, as a car mechanic. And so he didn't have a lot of funds to you know, buy all the equipment and accessories. So I heard that a lot of the accessories were bought by his brother. So he was like the sponsor for his like, hobby. <laughs> yeah. So um, in the early 60s, he got very uh, involved in photography and joined the now defunct Southeast Asian Photographic Society. And during his time with the society, he actually submitted a lot of images to the overseas photo photography salon. So some of the countries that he submitted to included like Japan, Hong Kong, even like UK, Argentina, and Romania. So that was all in the early 1960s. This talk has three segments to it. So the first segment will be a general discussion about Mr. Louis' photographs. The second sec section will be about um, a short dialogue about how he started his journey in photography. And last but not least, we'll have a Q&A session that is open to the floor as well. So to start the ball rolling, can anyone guess who is Mr. Louis in this photograph? Can anyone guess? OK, I've got a point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Number two. Number two? Number two? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right, number two. <laughs> <laughs> the most stylish one with the shades. <laughs> <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, so Mr. Lu I was just asking Mr. Louis, uh, what, what do you do with your group of friends? What, what, what does this group do? So, he said that when you go out for a shoot, there is always a leader. He will just follow where the leader brings him to. So they will go on an NTUC bus. About 12 people. Everyone pays $2. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so basically, what he shared with me before was that you know, they will go on really excursions to different parts of Singapore. So they will all pay $2 and go together with the leader, like he said. And then um, it's the leader who decides where to go. So they just kind of usually go to like some kampong or some villages. Some like factories. And Jurong, Jurong. Uh, yeah, Jurong area. Potong Pase. So these are places where there are villages in the past. Every single day, they will go to the village. So they will go to the village. So every Saturday, they will actually meet at the association to discuss about their images. So they will actually print out and then they have a kind of critique. So they will critique each other's images. Are you there? No. So they will just kind of share ideas on how to improve on their images. Okay. So let's move So one of his favorite spots to photograph is at Mandaka Bridge. So we'll look at some of the images from there. 
Why do you like to go to the Madeka Bridge to take photographs? Which must you choose? Ah, there are many things to shoot there. Also, there are many things to shoot there. 比如说呃船啊，呃修理东西啊，还是游船班啊，搭船啊。So big ships, uh, small boats as well. 我什么也拍的。So he basically shoots everything that you can see there. So another area, know the Kampong scenes where he likes to photograph the villages. This is in Jurong. Anyone recognize? <laughs> Anyone know where is this? Must ask his brothers. No doubt. I don't know. In the west. In the west? In the west of Singapore. This? No. This is in Tanamera. So in the, in the east. Yeah. So he was telling me that you know it looks very like foggy and misty. It's not the morning mist. It's because over there they used to burn the seashells to make the whitewash paint. That's why they have all this smoke around. That's why it's very atmospheric. <laughs> so, Tai Seng. Tai Seng. So he was telling me it was between Tai Seng and Aukang. Because the thing is, the roads name have all changed. So you can't be very sure exactly where is it. Because in the past it could be called Tai Seng, but now it's called like another name now. So these are the roof from taking water from the well. This is Jurong. This is uh, in Jurong. So this is like the place where they take water to shower themselves. This is between Topayu and uh, Potong Pasir. Between Topayu and Potong Pasir. He's actually not collecting water, he's actually collecting coconut flower alcohol. So it's called todi. That's what the Indians used to make. So they actually make uh, alcohol using coconut flowers. So they ferment it and then now he's taking it up for consumption. Okay, so he also shot a lot of you know, images of people at work. They're wrong. So this is at Jurong, so they are actually making the roof of the building. No safety belt. Huh? No safety belt. No safety belt. Safety belt. <laughs> oh, you're saying that uh, in the past there's no safety belt. There's no like, no, they just climb up there and no, it's very hazardous. This is at Chinatown. This is at Chinatown, so they're making things. This is um, drying noodles. This is Duli Chow. This uh, at Nadaka Bridge, so they were actually doing some ship repairs. Anyone on the venture guess what is this? That's right, yeah. So these are. Um, the, yeah, the mm. men, you know, mm. getting all the seashells mm. to, for burning so that they actually make white wash paint. So these are not just normal seashells, they are cocker shells because they are white. Potong Pase. Yeah, so this is a Potong Pase. So he's actually soaking all the rattan cane for construction when you know when they build all the scaffolding they tie this with the cane. And then he was also wanting me to point out to you that actually water buffaloes behind. These are water buffaloes and these like actually all the houses. This is the uh, Otra. So the Indian Dobi. So he said that these are probably uh, the, the sheets from the hospital, the Singapore General Hospital. Thank you. This, um, this man is actually cooking for the devotees who go to the temple at Tankro. So he's actually So actually, initially we thought that you know, these images were staged because they look like they what are they doing with all the chanko. So basically he said that this was uh, the time when they were making the roads. So when they made the road, they're actually very rough, so they have all these little scrapes here. So they have to scrape it off, so that the road becomes smoother. Yeah, so uh, he was telling me that these are ladies from the Teochew and Hokkien dialect. So I asked him what was the difference. He was saying that you know, only the ladies from who are Teochew and dialect use this kind of hats and this kind of dressing. The Cantonese ladies will actually be the Samsui women, and they have the red hats. Uh, Chinatown. Chinatown. So this man is writing Chinese couplets. Usually, it's very popular during Chinese New Year. So now there are some composite shots as well. 
Mm. So for this, right? Deity. Deity. How is it? So actually, he. Yeah. No, the the Zhang An Lin, he that Su Mu Ah, the Sky is too hard. So he that Su Mu Ah, the Sky is too hard. So he that Su Mu Ah, the Sky is too hard. So he that Su Mu Ah, the Sky is too hard. So he that Su Mu Ah, the Sky is too hard. So this image is actually done in the dark room with two negatives. Yeah. So he actually shot the picture of the tree, the branches, with the sky as a background. So he has to make sure that the sky is very blue and no clouds. So it's kind of clear background. And then the picture of the sailboat with a clear background as well. And then he actually put them together in the dark room and then expose it as a one image. So besides um, composite images, he also did a series of like pose portraits. So this is actually at Tanjong Paga. So he told me that he actually went there first. He saw that this is a nice area, nice background, but then there was no action. So he actually got his brother to pose for him. <laughs> yeah, so he actually even got his brother to change into his work clothes. Oh. So that, you know, to, to kind of create a story for, for this scenario. Oh, metal pipes. Metal pipes. Yeah. You don't know what this is? It's like water pipes. It's like water pipes. It's like water pipes. Uh, water pipes. Yeah, but it's not, not confirmed. So, Mr. Lee, who are these people that you asked them to pose? Uh, this is my friend. He took his friend to the next one. Is he a artist? Is he a artist? He's a artist. So, this is actually an image. Um, the guy with the umbrella is actually a fellow photographer. So, he actually, he actually brought the props. This kind of clothing, and they brought someone else's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you know, it's like a big you know, coordination to get this picture done. So I also asked him about the umbrella. What were you saying? Tell me. Because that that the umbrella, ah, you look at it, that the subject will be big, will be more clear. If two people are standing side by side, it's not good. So he was saying that you know. Uh, 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 he included the umbrella because if there's only these two person, two very small, so with the umbrella, it kind of you know, make the subject look a bit bigger. So your attention will be focused on that. So it's all pre-planned. You know, it's, it's not a random shot. <laughs> this shot in Bukit Panjang in a rubber plantation. So you can see umbrella is a very popular prop. <laughs> This is the F and N factory, and this is actually him. It's a self-portrait. Who did it? Who did it? Like he used my friend's photo, he used the three sticks. So he asked his friend to click the shutter. So this is where he works, actually. Why would he take himself? He takes himself, he doesn't take himself. I don't know. Because I have action, I will shoot you. Why do you not want to shoot people? That's why it's the people who are in the inside. So he was saying that he shot a self-image because this place is only probably other people are not allowed to go in. So because he's working there and he can only pose himself and then take a picture of himself. You have a question? Is this a whole brand of real value? Sorry? Ah, uh, yeah, so this is the old factory. Ah, yeah, he can't remember where is this. But basically, this is our fellow photographer. He actually asked him to change to clan up. <laughs> yeah, this, yes. These are the things they do, you know. So a lot of times we're sharing that they basically find the location. And like they think that it's a nice background, mm -hmm. but then they do not have enough time to wait for people to appear, so they will create their own subjects. So they go into the details of that, bring their own clothes, so that it looks like you know there are people working there. This is woman. So this is actually one of the leaders of the photographic society. So this is you. Ah, 啊，他自己摆，他他在那边，那么自己摆，他是摇来摇去，你看的动作，那好
เราได้เย็นพันจุไรเขาในไทยไป So this is the leader. So he is actually the model for them. So he he propped himself there, and he was smooth. And they will actually find their own angles and wait for the smoke to come out. Then they take their picture. Yeah. So that was like a practice for them. This is my son. This is an old airport road. This is an image of his son. You call Hani Fu? No. 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 So if you wonder why, you know, it's so nicely composed and the clothing, because he actually planned for it. He actually planned to have striped shirts and a hat, so to get to make it more graphic. Okay, so he also experimented with infrared films. So this is uh, Nanda. So this is um, Nanyang University. This building is still around. Now it's uh, used by National no, Nanyang Technological University, Jurong West. Yeah, so mm. Mr. Louis, well, why did you choose to use infrared film? Infrared film is it shoots the sky, very thick, and the sky is thick. But it's very difficult to shoot the sky. But I didn't have to wait for that time, so I decided to shoot it. So he said that he used infrafilms because it will make the leaves and the white color stand up, but it's also not easy because it can easily overexpose it. Yeah, so he said that usually you need a very blue background or the blue sky, so you can see the contrast of the leaves. And Tai Sing. This is at Tai Sing. It's more difficult to develop it as well. Very wet. Very wet. Very wet. 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 Because it will easily melt if the temperature of the water is not correct. This is how it is. I don't know. Because you are 60. I have a pot and a pot. Put it in. 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 So he was saying that you know the temperature of water is about sixty-five Fahrenheit. Why is that in degrees? <laughs> Fahrenheit. Sixty-five Fahrenheit. I'm not too sure how to convert. And then he said I need to put the ice in it as well. The basin. Oh, then it will melt. 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 Eighteen, eighteen Celsius, eighteen to twenty Celsius. The next segment is the portraits that you all don't get to see in the exhibition. Who is this, Mr. Lui? Ah, this is they organize. Yashika organize. He called us to come and take the photo. So actually, this is a photograph taken. Uh, during a competition organized by Yashika Camera, so I can see them very clearly. <coughs> so actually, in the past, when they have such competitions, they actually have a model for them, and then they invite other photographers to go and take pictures of the model, and then they make sure that their product is like prominently displayed. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, this? Mm. <laughs> 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 Why men chase turtles? Nali. Ah, not remember. So this is just some strangers on the street that he found. So it's not a studio shot. Yeah, it's actually natural lighting. This is shot in a studio. This is shot in a studio. So he said this is a beggar that they found on the street. So they actually kind of pay him to model for them. So they brought him to the studio. So everyone pay five dollars to him. That's quite a lot of money actually. So this is his studio. Okay. 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 Okay.
So he will, he will go around looking for like interesting faces. And then you see that the light, the light shining on his face is very interesting. So he'll just like, can he take a picture of you? And you don't tell me to Usually just one shot, one take. But very slow. Yeah. Uh. But he'll take his time to compose. Yeah. Yeah, he, I, he told me before that, you know, because the films are very expensive. In the past, it's like $3 per roll and there's about 11 shots and he earns about like 12 shots. $21 per week but also he gives most of his salary to his mom so he only gets like the last week of the month he'll keep his own salary so the first three weeks he'll actually pass the mom so you can imagine like for every roll three dollars he only like for thirty-one dollars per month three dollars is spent on the films so you have to be very very prudent about clicking <laughs> This is at the Red Brick Factory at Red Hill. So there, there are a lot of like Indian children over there. So he actually brought his own black cloth for them to cover themselves and take a picture. <laughs> yeah, so they are not dressed like this. So he is the Stalin as well. <laughs> Yeah. So he, he pays them as well. Yeah. 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 Like but cheaper, 30 cents. <laughs> <laughs> wow. and, and market shot, famous market shot. The most famous. Mm. So Mr. Louis, what made you take this photograph? Yeah. Why, is it make, why did it interest you? This is what? What's the name? This is the one who is so he said that this location actually was introduced by one of the members from the photography society. So he informed him that, you know, there's this nice scene that he can go and photograph and even be very specific about the date and the time that he can go because the sun rays will be different. Yeah, so he actually went there three times before he finally got this shot. Yeah, and he had to climb quite high up. Ah. Box. Ah. So he had to climb on all the boxes to get high enough to get this angle. Mm, so he was there around 6 to 7 o'clock in the morning. Mm. Because he say he needs to get that early because uh, once the sun goes further up in the sky, you will not get all this ray at this angle. So it's all kind of like scientific that you need to know when the sun is rising and at which angle. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. so Okay, now moving on to the second segment of this artist talk. Uh, I'll be asking Mr. Louis some questions about his journey in photography and why he started, uh, etc. So, uh, Mr. Louis, what aspect of photography do you like the most? I can tell you. I can tell you. I can tell you. I I so uh, when Mr. Louis was younger, uh, he liked to see other people like taking very good shots. So he and his brother both went out and took photos together because he was interested in the beauty of photographs. So what? Okay, so I asked Mr. Louis, uh, what about what specifically about the process of processing all your like photographs uh, do you enjoy the most apart from like photography as a whole? Exactly. 
，拍到一张好的，一定很喜欢写啊。哦，那你不是，是吧？没有相片啊。特别的技术，你开始的时候有什么特别？你你有没有会做出什么效果？这样子你会故意去？嗯，那就不会了，因为跌底来了。嗯。So he was saying that he actually don't particularly enjoy developing images. He only gets very excited when the images are beautiful. <laughs> so when it turns out to be not very nice, he actually is quite disappointed. But as you can imagine, you know, he can only shoot so few, and every time he develops, it's not an interesting shot. He's like no wasted effort. Yeah. So we also asked him like. Um, what kind of special techniques does he use in the dark room? Okay,跟我们讲晚上晚上晚上我们以前那那种木纸是啊厨房跟台台啊冲凉房啊一起的那么晚上就要洗相片拉布子 Okay, so he was sharing that in the past you know, he usually have two toilets in the house. One is for showering and one is to do your other businesses. <laughs> yeah, so he will use the, the toilet for showering at night to develop his films and pictures because he can't afford to set it out to develop. So he will actually put a black cloth and only do it at night because usually when we develop, we have a photography bag um, to, to, to do it. But you can't afford that as well, so you just put a black cloth and it can only develop at night when there's no light. So, Mr. Louis, when you were starting to learn photography, was it difficult? Mm. Okay. So, yeah, I say initially, it's of course, definitely difficult. Yeah, he say you um, have to slowly learn and look at others' images and also look at paintings to learn how to compose. Let me can't say the can't say the topic. Can't say the topic. You see, 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 so he got his inspiration from photo exhibitions and also learning from experienced photographers, images by experienced photographers. So, uh, Mr. Lui, when you entered uh, these photography salons, uh, was the atmosphere very tense? Was, the comp was it competition or was it like friendly competition? Uh, so he was sharing that, you know, at the society, people are actually quite friendly. They are not so competitive. So they are quite um, giving and, you know, have the habit of sharing ideas. Okay, so now I'm present. Uh, Mr. Lui, in the past you like to take all these photos, but now, uh, what do you do in photography? Do you still go out and take photos? Yes, I have to be here. Oh, yes. Now he still goes out to shoot in the morning, but not at night. <laughs> Hey, bye, hi. No, 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 你看你现在列就好了这边很远就不可以进了拍什么以前呢他有一个巴掌给我们进去走来走去拍现在远远就这边不能进拍什么现在的街头还是不能进的有什么<咳> 
接图也是。Can I just translate for the rest? First? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so he was saying that you know she was asking what does he like to shoot now, and he was saying that it's actually quite difficult to find nice things to shoot in Singapore, and even if there's nice things to shoot, there's a lot of restrictions. We are talking about like even like in the National Day Parade, you no, know, you can't actually go in to shoot. In the past, it's at the Padang, and people can just go in and shoot whatever they want. Yeah. Sorry. Singapore 谢谢谢谢 so, so he was saying that um, She was asking whether there's any scenery or street scenes that he like to shoot So he said that um, Unfortunately there's not much of a scenery in Singapore <laughs> And uh, nothing much to shoot uh, Mr. Louis, when you go around shooting now Do you do it alone or do you do it with a group of friends? Or do you have another uh, organization, a photo club that you are with? Now he just shoots alone, mm. doesn't join any photography club. So I guess we can open up the yeah. question to the floor. So anyone has any questions for Mr. Louis? Even though he is telling me that don't, don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to challenge him. <laughs>现在用数码相机习惯吗感觉跟用胶卷有什么分别不习惯不习惯 so he's saying that you know when you use film, there's more layers and the tonality of the black and white films are more richer as compared to digital it's quite flat. There's no like different layers. Thank you. Anyone else has any questions? Sorry about Sure. I think it's <笑>我看那个光线真的很美虽然我想知道我最喜欢的是那个市场的照片因为那个光真的很漂亮想知道你自己最喜欢的照片是什么 that obviously he liked this image the best because the sun rays are very nice and all the people are standing in, in a very kind of organized manner it's not as bad messy where everyone is in different position thank you uh, we just hey, have... see, see, <laughs> Mr. Lee would like to end the session here <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I'll just one last question if there's no more then uh, yes Okay. So there's both um, benefits in black and white out and colored images. So now he uses digital camera, so he use um, he should in color. <laughs> yes, Miss Anna. Um, when Mr. Dury was taking the photos in the 1960s, was, was he aware that the photos that he was taking, that the places were going to disappear, and that he was taking the photos to kind of keep a snapshot of that piece of time? Like, was he aware that it was maybe yeah. going to disappear? Okay. You know, when you're taking the photos, you know that these places will disappear very quickly. 
还是你就是、呃、有的就懂了，好像波动八线那种啊，那种词啊，迟早也是要玩的啊，所以有啊，因为他整天他们讲要要要要做做那种政府主务的。Yeah, so he actually knows that some of these places will be disappearing soon, like the Porto Passe. He knows that all these pond areas will, will disappear. That's why he was very keen in going there. Yeah, so he said he heard about this, like, you know, seeing all the different areas of the HDB flats have been built. So he, he kind of knows that this area will, will disappear. It's actually quite important, like historically, yeah. this is the photo. Yeah. 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 拍的东西啊，那谢谢他。Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think with that we'll end the session here today. So thank you very much for being here with us. So um, yeah. Before I end, he has prepared a list to thank the different people who helped him with this exhibition. So I ask Chris to read up for him. So, uh, Mr. Louis Hock Singh is very grateful to the many people who have supported his journey and made this exhibition possible. Here's a short, heartfelt speech of gratitude on behalf of Mr. Louis. Uh, thank you very much to Objectives for holding this exhibition for me, namely Ryan Chua, who made this possible and worked so hard on this. And also, uh, Emily Yong. who was instrumental in launching this project, as well as Quinn Spine and Gladys Ng and their colleagues and objectives. <laughs> uh, also, Chris Yap from Light Editions, the artist who printed these photographs. As well as all the sponsors and supporters of this exhibition. Thank you also to photographers and printers at Art Studio in Geylang and Life Studio in Papayo who helped me develop my craft. Uh, Nicolas Jonti, who bought the first photograph I've ever sold. He has been an advocate and supporter of my work, even though he did not meet, uh, know me at all and only read about me in the media. <laughs> Photographers, journalists and others in the media who have told my story, such as photographer Wang Huifen and journalist Vanessa Lee at The Straits Times. <laughs> In addition, at Lian He Zhao Bao, reporters Tan Yu Xin and Tou Yan Wei, photographer Lim Kok Ming, and ex sub editor Xu Fu Gang. <laughs> as well as the, the Business Times, such as journalist Chuang Pek Ming, also known as Lu Jia Quan, and graphic editor Simon Ang. <laughs> Yao Liang from Mo Press. Cheryl from Mukim Fine Papers for sponsoring part of the production cost of the photo book. Great. I think from the press, there's so Tessa behind. <laughs> my older brother, Louis Fook Choi, who helped me and bought me my first camera, a mechanical Rolleiflex, and my late mother, who always supported me. To everyone who has helped and supported me in my journey, thank you very much for this chance to have an exhibition of my photographs at the age of 81. And of course, last but definitely not least, the National Arts Council for funding this exhibition. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you everyone for coming here. So if you like what we do and if you want to support the exhibition and support us, you know, Mr. Lee's book is available for pre-orders. So it's um, priced at $40 now and when it's published, it'll be $45. <laughs> so get it now. <laughs> and also the prints are available for sale. And we also have a tote bag and postcards. So if you like, do support and spread the word to your friends so that they can come and enjoy this exhibition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.